بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد my brothers and sisters Ramadan is the month of opportunity to reboot our lives and gain the rida of Allah سبحانه وتعالى to start all over again and make our lives Sharia compliant and achieve closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In life, all human beings have only two daruriyat. Daruri is something the absence of which will lead to death. The two daruriyat are not food and water or even air. They are hidayah, guidance, while we live, and maghfira, forgiveness, after we die. If a, per- if a person has guidance and is forgiven when he or she dies, no matter what their situation was in the dunya, they will go to Jannah. But if a person was misguided and died in that state on kofar or shirk, then they will go to Jahannam. The key to ask ourselves is, where am I? On guidance or without guidance? Ramadan al-Kareem comes to put this into perspective where by following the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we hold ourselves back from things which are otherwise halal during specified hours. This reinforces the meaning of being a Muslim, someone who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan forces us to understand that when it comes to choosing between what is good for the body and what is good for the soul, we must give precedence to the soul. We remind ourselves that on top of the most beautiful face, the strongest body, the cutest child, the most dignified scholar, the most magnificent king and queen, one day will be dumped thousands of pounds of earth. Talk about helplessness. Death is not the cessation of life. It is the cessation of ability, of power, of authority. It is the cessation of the capability of doing something, the capability of to help ourselves. It is the name of total helplessness and vulnerability that is impossible to imagine in this life. At that time, the only thing that will help us is what we send ahead. We need to change the way we think about charity and recognize it for what it is. I want you to think of two words, spend and save, which is a better word. Two other words, sacrifice and invest, which is a better word. We have have always been told to sacrifice for the sake of Allah. Qurbani dijiye. I submit to you that this is a false narrative. There is no such thing as sacrifice when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me show you why. For something to be considered a sacrifice, it must satisfy two conditions. One, it must be something that belongs to you and I must not get any return for giving it away. Right? It must be something that belongs to you and you must not get any return for giving it away. I cannot take what is in your wallet and donate it and call it my sacrifice. Similarly, I cannot sell you something of mine, take the payment and say that I sacrificed this thing for you. I can only say that I sacrifice something if it belongs to me in the first place and if I get nothing in return for it. A sacrifice is therefore a net loss. Let us see what we ha- what we uh, what happens when we spend in the cause of Allah. Let us see if the conditions of sacrifice are satisfied. Firstly, everything we have, without exception, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hold it in trust for as long as He wishes. Our very life itself, our wealth, our health, our knowledge, our time, the ability and strength that we have, our influence, our authority, everything of any description that we have, our wives, our children, parents, uh, spouses, relationships, everything. They all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to us. Despite that, 
when we spend it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the minimum return is we get 1000% reward. The return is 1000%. There is nothing smaller than that. So what is this great sacrifice? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, as we all know, Man jaa bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. Wa man jaa bil sayyiati fala yujza illa mithlaha wa hum la yuzlamun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, which means whoever brings a good deed, one good deed, shall have ten times the like thereof. Shall have ten times goodness and ten times reward. To his credit. And whoever brings an evil deed shall have only the recompense of the like, which means one for one. Good deed is ten for one. And they will not be wronged. La Yuslamun, they will not be wronged. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلَ فِي كُلِّ سُمْبُلَةٍ مِيَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُدَعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah said the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the example of a grain of corn. When you plant it, it grows seven years and each year has a hundred grains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives manifold increase to whom, he, to whom he pleases and Allah is all sufficient for his creatures needs the all knower. In this beautiful ayat al karima not only is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that what, is, what we spend in his path, he will give a reward of one is to seven hundred, but he adds to that and he says, and Allah will give more increase to whoever he likes. How much more? in keeping with His Majesty and Grace. Allah does not count and give. The counting is only for us to satisfy our uh, small little minds and hearts. What sacrifice really are we talking about? What do, what do these ayats sound like to you? Tell me something. Give up something without any return, net loss, or unimaginable gain guaranteed by the one who has the power to guarantee it. Which one? Another problem with the sacrifice mindset is, that since to sacrifice something is to give it away without any return, it is a zero-sum game and ends long before we reach zero. Even the most generous person will come to a point where he or she has nothing more left to give. Most will stop giving long before that. That is why we have the term donor fatigue. Sadly, nobody seems to have a solution to that apart from doing what we do with grazing cattle. Leave some fields uh, fallow for a while for the grass to grow back before bringing the cows back to grace. What is very interesting to me is that the real solution is crystal clear in the Quran and the Sunnah for anyone who wants to look at it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh you who believe, shall I guide you, shall I show you a trade that will save you from a powerful torment. In another place, Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahumul jannah. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties as the price for jannah. Sale, purchase, trade, return. We are not talking about sacrifice. We are talking about investment. So I want you to remove the word sacrifice from your vocabulary and replace it with the word investment. I am a business consultant and we talk about ROI, return on investment. When, when considering investment opportunities and assessing return on investment, we look at two parameters, rate of return and value of guarantee. Who is the guarantor? Rate of return and who is the guarantor of this return. Now, what do you say about investment where the rate of return is 1000% minimum and the guarantor is the only one who can give a guarantee without a doubt? Sounds like a no-brainer, right? But that is only if we believe the guarantor. Do we believe what he told us? Do we really believe that we need to make these investments? Do we believe that we need these investments? That is the choice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us today. Whether we want to save and invest for the life to come, which has no end, or whether we want to spend in this life, which will end, we know not when. 
Let us choose wisely because it is about us. You don't call what you spend on Wall Street donation, do you? Or sacrifice? You don't buy a beautiful house or a car or jewelry and call that and call what you paid for it donation or sacrifice, do you? So how is spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a guaranteed minimum return of 1000% 10 times guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself? How is that a donation? How is that a sacrifice? Please remove these words and see how donor fatigue disappears. Wall Street or Nasdaq never talk about donor fatigue, right? When they give no guarantees at all. So why should we, when we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guarantee to back our offerings? I am serious. The problem is deeper than semantics or definition of words or concepts. It has to do with how we think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us Ramadan. So we can know him, gain closeness to him by becoming muttaqoon. That, and, and understand that one day we will die. Now that is the reality. The reality doesn't depend on belief for its existence. So the question to ask is, do I believe that this will happen to me? No, it's not a dumb question. Let us look at our lives what we do, how we earn, where we spend, what we eat, what comes out of our mouths and the truth about our belief will become totally clear. For those who do believe and live by that belief, there is great good news. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the time which will come upon all of us. When everyone, no matter what their level, will be afraid. Without exception. Everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَوْ لَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْهُلْقُومِ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ وَعْقُرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبُصِرُونَ فَلَوْ لَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ In Surah Al-Waqiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when you are standing, when the, when the breath is stuck in the throat, he's talking about the time of Nada, the time of Sakrat. We ask Allah to save us from Sakrat, to save us from the pain of Sakrat, the suffering of Sakrat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the time when we will be, we will be struggling for breath. The breath is stuck in the throat. It can't go out. It can't come in. And you're struggling for that. We ask Allah to save us from those times. Allah said, when that happens, and you're standing there and looking on. This is happening to the person who's dearest, for, dearest to you. You are willing to give your life for that person, but there's nothing you can do. Allah said, when that happens, and you're standing there looking on. We are closest to him, to that person, but you cannot see us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a challenge. And He says, if you think you are so powerful, return that soul, return that, that breath. Return that breath, bring that soul back to life. And for the ones who believed and who worked for that belief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has great promise and great bashar, great good news. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَاللَّهُ تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبُشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ نَحْنُ وَقُرْأَنَهُنَّ وَأُولِيَاؤُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ نُزُلًا مِّنْ غَفُورٍ رَّحِيمٍ In Surah Fussilat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this beautiful ayat. I make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should make these ayat true for all of us, inshallah. Allah said, Verily those who say, قَالُوا رَبُّنْ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا This is the key this is the secret formula which is public knowledge for anyone who wants to go to Jannah. Verily those who say our Rabb is Allah alone. They worship no one other than Allah. They ask help from no one other than Allah. 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا and then they have استقامت on that and then they are steadfast on that they remain steadfast on that they don't go here and there they don't mix up things verily those who say our Rabb is Allah alone and then they istiqamu they have they remain steadfast on them the angels will descend at the time of death saying fear not and do not grieve do not fear and do not grieve Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannati lati kuntum tu'adun but receive the glad tidings, the good news of Jannah which you have been promised. While this person is still dying, he is given the Bashar of Jannah. We have been your friends in this life of this world and, are, and will remain so in the hereafter. They are saying, don't worry. It is a journey that you have never been on and you are afraid, but don't. we are coming with you. We are with you, we were with you and now we are coming with you. And in that, in that place where you are going to, therein you shall have that which your inner selves desire, all that you, whatever you can desire and whatever was the deepest of your desires, you will have that. And therein you will have everything which you ask for. And all of this is only a welcome from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the most forgiving, most merciful. Nuzul is like a like a welcome drink, say for example, a, 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 a very uh, anxiously and eagerly awaited guest comes and he comes from a long distance and he's, he's tired and he comes into the house. Now you have all kinds of plans. You're planning a great dinner for him and a banquet for him and you will take him here, take him there and whatnot. But as soon as a person comes, you don't lead them to the dining table which is loaded with food. You give them, you sit them down, you give them some cool, cool drinks, some cool water or something as a this is a this is a precursor for all the great things that are to come that's called nuzul the the beginning which is a which is really a, a sort of glimpse a thumbnail of what has to come nuzula min ghafuri rahim as i told you two zaruriyat hidayah in this in this life and forgiveness in the hereafter and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have introduced himself in terms of any of his names and attributes but he chose this one, Ghafoori Rahim, the most forgiving, the most merciful. The surest sign of life, my brothers and sisters, is the ability to feel pain. It is not the ability to feel pleasure or understand anything or recognize anyone. It is simply the ability to feel pain. And that is why our Noman bin Bashir reported <coughs> that Rasulullah said, the example of the believers is the, in their affection and mercy and compassion for each other is like that of a body. When any limb aches, the whole body reacts with sleep, sleeplessness, sleeplessness and fear. And this is in <coughs> Bukhari and Muslim. When a person is in a coma, doctors induce pain in different ways to see if he reacts. If there is no reaction, that means the person is dead. The same logic applies to the heart. When the heart can no longer feel pain, you can say that it is dead. It's merely a pump to move blood around the body. The concept of what we call heart in English as a, a, as a translation of the Arabic word Qalb is really a misnomer. It's a mistranslation. The word Qalb, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in the Quran, is a place of understanding and feeling, a combination of emotion and intellect. Heart, head and heart, as we say in English, together. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارْ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Allah said, Verily, it is not the eyes that grow blind, but it is the hearts which are in the breasts that grow blind. My question to myself and you is, Are our hearts alive? Do we feel the pain? The pain of being truly alone in the world. Remember that companionship is not someone sitting on the same bench or, or the next seat or even living in the same house. Companionship is the one who is in the heart. Companionship is, is with the one who is in the heart. For an orphan, that is over, forever. The companionship of the parents is irreplaceable. The technical term in Arabic for orphan is yatim, as we know. Linguistically, it means 
something that is isolated and alone. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you cannot understand that. For there is only one way to understand any pain, by feeling it, by suffering it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spared you, thank Him, Jalla Jalaluhu, and do your best to alleviate it for others. Abu Darda al-Ansari reported that Rasulullah said, Seek me among the weak, for you are given sustenance and help only because of the weak among you. And this is in Sunan Abi Dawud. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that Rasulullah said, The best house among the Muslims is the house in which orphans are well treated. The worst house among the Muslims is the house in which orphans are ill-treated. I and the guardian of the orphan will be in Jannah like that. Now he held up his two fingers, the index finger and the, ne- and the middle finger together without any gap, obviously, like this. And this is in uh, Bukhari as well and Muslim. Why is there an emphasis on bringing orphans into your household? beyond just financially supporting them. Did you think of that? Because having them in your house means that you are also providing for their emotional needs, in particular for the love and care of a parent. Sahal bin Sa'ad narrated that Rasulullah said, I and the caretaker of uh, an orphan will enter Jannah together like this. And again, he raised his uh, forefinger and middle finger jointly leaving no space between them and this is in Bukhari. Once again, the same question. Do I believe? Remember that belief is not belief that is not followed by action is not belief because the currency of the day of judgment is deeds, not claims of belief. Let me tell you two uh, very poignant stories. One is the story of Bashir bin Ghazaya. He was a little boy, maybe five years old or so. His mother had already died. His father went to went for the battle of Ahad and he was shaheed in the, in the battle of Ahad. He, he, he was killed in the battle of Ahad. So he was, uh, little Bashir was standing, uh, you know, on a little promontory on the edge of Medina, watching the, uh, the uh, army coming and he's looking for his father. You can imagine a little boy looking like this to, for his father. He can't see his father anywhere. <coughs> then he sees Rasulullah So he calls out, he says, Ya Rasulullah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi looks at him, he's a little boy here, he's got tears in his eyes, he's weeping. He's, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what happened to you? He said, Ya Rasulullah, where is my father? So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, Alhamdulillah, your father is Shaheed. Uh, in this battle he passed away and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given him Jannah. The boy is weeping and crying. Now, his father got Jannah, that's fine, but this little boy, now he had no mother, he lost his father also. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, my mother has already passed away and my father also has gone. I have nobody in this world. Rasulullah picked him up, held him to his chest, and he said, Bashir, how would you like Muhammad to be your father, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Aisha to be your mother? And that little boy, you know, they have sense, children have sense. That little boy's tears disappeared, his crying disappeared, he started laughing. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me better. Now this is the this is the love that Rasulullah had for orphans. I remind myself in you, <coughs> let us live this deen because this beautiful deen came for us to live. Second story, and I will end with this, is the story of Abu Dahd al-Ansari. He was sitting in the masjid one day and a, a, another orphan, a little boy came and he was weeping and he came to Rasulullah sallam. Now he said, asked him, what happened to you? Why are you crying? He said, Ya Rasulullah, my father, I'm as you know, I am an orphan, I have nobody. My father left me a small piece of, uh, of land of a garden. Uh, date palms and I want to, to build a wall uh, to secure the place around it and there is a date palm which is in the way of this wall. Now this date palm belongs to my neighbor and his neighbor is also a Muslim and a good Muslim is not a monastic or anything. So he said I went to him I asked him I said can I can you allow me to cut the tree so I can build my wall. He said no. He said then can you sell me this tree. I will pay for it. Can you sell me the tree? Then I will cut the tree and I will build my wall uh, securely. He said, no, it's my tree. I will not sell it. So this boy said, now I'm helpless. I don't know what to do. So Rasulullah Sallallahu said, he said to somebody, go call the man. They called him. He came. Rasulullah Sallallahu said to him, 
let this boy have this tree. He said, no, Yaroslav, this is my tree. It is my right. May Allah protect us from ourselves. Sometimes, you know, the shaitan gets you. So Rasulullah said, then sell him the tree. Take some money for it. You know, transaction is over. He said, no, I don't want to sell the tree. It is my right. I can do whatever I like with my, with my property. I will not sell the tree. I will not give it. I will not sell it. Rasulullah said to him, okay, then do this. He said, sell me that tree. Sell that tree to me. And I will guarantee you a tree in Jannah. Uh, now, what, is the, what does this mean? Guarantee you a tree in Jannah means what? It means Jannah is yours. He's giving him the Bashar of Jannah. May Allah protect us from ourselves. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, I will not sell you the tree. I don't want this tree in Jannah. And he left. Imagine the kind of shocked silence there must have been there. And this little kid now is helpless. He says, now what to do? I, I came to Rasulullah and even here it didn't work. Abu Dada Hal Ansari. And again, I'm talking about people who believed that they would die, who believed that they will meet Allah, who believed that investing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the thing to do. Not sacrifice, investing. So Abu Dahad al Ansari who was witness to all this conversation, he got up, he came to Mr. Salaf. He said, Ya Rasulullah, if I get that tree for this boy, will you guarantee me the same thing you guaranteed that man, which is a tree in Jannah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Yes, that is yours. Abu Dahad al Ansari went behind this man. And by the time he found him, this man was in the market. And Abu Dhada said to him, he met him, he said, Salam, he said, Walim Salam, he said, Do you know who I am? He said, Of course we know who you are, everybody knows who you are. He said, What do you know about me? So he said, You are Abu Dhada and you own the most valuable date palm garden in Medina. He said, what do you know about my date palm garden? He said, your date palm garden, as far as we know, has 650 date palms, fully bearing, fully mature. It has a well of sweet water. It is surrounded with a wall, completely secure. And your house is in there, in that, and you live in there. Abu Dhatta Radhelana said, that's correct. He said, I came to ask you to sell me that tree which Rasulullah asked you to sell. This man said, what kind of conversation is this? I did not sell that tree to the Rasul of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why would I sell it to you? Abu Dhabi said, no, no, hold on a second. Let me tell you what I'm offering as a price. He said, I am offering you my date palm garden, everything as is, where is, date palms, well, house, wall, everything in exchange for that one tree. The man said, this is a joke. I mean, are you, what's, what, what's happening here? Abu Dhabi said, no, it's not a joke. He said, I'm serious. This is what I'm offering. One, that one tree, I give you everything I have. The man said, are you crazy? He said, I'm not crazy. He said, will you change your mind? If I, if I, if I agree, then you say this and that. You like, he said, no. Now imagine, there's a whole bunch of people now collected around them. They're listening to this completely out of the world conversation. So Abu Dhatar Adelana said, no, I'm making you an offer and this offer is true. I will do this. The man said then, it is yours. I've sold it to you. I've sold you that one tree in exchange for that, for your whole garden and everything else. Abu Dhatar Adelana said, thank you very much. He turned around, he went to Masjid Nabi Sharif. He said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, here is the tree. Tell the boy he can cut the tree, he can do what he wants. I have bought the tree. Then he said, Ya Rasulullah. Nabi uh, Sallallahu asked him uh, you know, how much he told him the whole story. Then he said, Ya Rasulullah. See, see the, the humanity of these people, how beautiful people. He said, Ya Rasulullah, the uh, tree in Jannah which you promised me, it is there, no? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Abu Dahda, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me your jannah. And then he said, how many trees are there, Ya Abadah? 
He said, how many trees? How many trees? How many trees? And he repeated. Abu Dhabi Allah Sayyid Radhaelano went to his house. He stood outside the outside the wall. He called out to his wife. He said, Ya Abu Dhabi, come out. She came out. He said, come, take, bring the children. We are leaving here. She said, why? Where are we going? He said, I've sold this. I've sold this whole garden, everything, house. She said, to whom? He said, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She says, for how much? He said, for one tree in Jannah. She said, what a bargain. Alhamdulillah. What a bargain. I mean, the sisters, think about this. What kind of people were these? The man just sold the roof over her head. From being a person of wealth. Her own house, her whole garden, everything else, all the social status, what not. She became a homeless person. And her husband sold that for, may Allah forgive us and, and, and protect us from blasphemy, for a pie in the sky. The promise of Jannah. One tree in Jannah. And she looks at that and he says, Alhamdulillah. What a bargain. What does that say about the yaqeen in the heart? It was real. Jannah was real. It was not a story. And that is what I am saying to you and myself. Ask inside you, how real is Jannah? And then prove that by giving. Jannah must be paid for. Let's pay. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jala to grant us in keeping with His majesty and grace and to enable us to pay for it in a way which pleases Him. Because we cannot even do this on our own. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. And we ask Him, Ya Rab, help us to do that which is pleasing to you and please accept it as a hadiyah and give us in keeping with Your majesty and grace. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika